What's up guys, welcome back to the channel and thanks for tuning in to my second video. The topic of this video is just going to be a big overview of the project itself, kind of walking through all the files, not really going into too much detail on each file, but just kind of explaining how each one plays into or fits into the larger puzzle that is this, uh, this program, this project. Um, one thing that I kind of forgot to point out in the intro video, but something that I definitely want to talk on is you might have probably noticed that I'm not actually using scm 30 Cube IDE or Keel or all those other ones that are pretty popular, but instead I'm using Visual Studio Code, which I probably are a little familiar with. It's a pretty popular uh, editor, but not very popular for STM32 just because it's not really designed to work with STM32. Um, there is a plugin called STM32 for Visual Studio Code, um, which I'd recommend. And I use STM32 Cube IDE for the longest time and it worked for a while, and it still does work. I just wasn't really a fan of the interface. Um, not really too happy with just a Eclipse in general. Everything's a little bit slow. And I gotta say, getting started with Visual Studio is not the easiest, and it took me a while. There are a lot of growing pains, and if you're interested in a video on just how to set Visual Studio code um, for SCM32, and just kind of the correct configuration of all the files, I can definitely go into that. Um, not sure I would recommend it, but it's definitely, now that I've kind of got it all set up, I would, I'm definitely not going back to uh, the Cube IDE just because of how much easier it is. But unfortunately, one of the also kind of byproducts of this is that my code is going to be slightly less compatible with people who are trying to port it or using their own projects. All the files themselves, I mean, the content's exactly the same as what you'd find in the Cube IDE. But there's some things like, uh, I guess SM32 Cube ID has like certain hidden files that are used to kind of help it run and whatnot in the background. And Visual Studio Code also has their own kind of weird launch settings, task files, which you have to configure individually, which are gonna be a little bit different depending on uh, the user. And then also, because I'm working on a Mac, it's gonna be a little bit different for people working on Windows and whatnot. So just kind of wanted to throw that out there. So now into the meat of this thing. So, Everything's broken up into a few folders and then I kind of have like a miscellaneous uh, area of just random files. So DRV folder contains all of the files that interact, interact directly with the hardware. So you can see like ADC, DMA, DSHOT, which goes into timers, um, Flash, which goes into like kind of a virtual EEPROM so you can uh, have uh, settings that will stick around even when you turn the power off. And then the RCC, so it's kind of like the clock configuration, serial, which goes into like UART, SBI, uh, more timers for separate stuff, and UARTs as well. So it, it's a little kind of, um, I wouldn't say the system is super great, and things are a little all over the place right now, and my goal is to kind of clean everything up in the end. So that's the DRV folder. Motion folder kind of talks about, um, these are all the files that do like all the processing on the data. So like once you receive commands from the, the, the receiver, then it kind of goes in here and it will like actually do the PID computations and then it goes to the mixer and then it actually sends stuff out to the motors and whatnot. And there's also like rotations, which does some weird rotations on it based on like the orientation of your flight controller and whatnot. And then sensors, so this is kind of what interacts with external stuff. So you have like your MPU 6000 file, IBUS file, and then Magwick, which kind of does uh, some more of the computations and more of the rotations. Now I'm thinking of it, Magwick should probably go in the motion file, but I digress. Uh, and then this is the miscellaneous kind of folder. And like I said, this thing definitely needs to be cleaned up a little bit more. But we have files like the battery file, which takes care of um, tracking the, monitoring the battery uh, so that like you don't go too low on LiPos, which we know is pretty dangerous. Uh, configuration file, which takes care of like lots of the EEPROM stuff. Um, then logging, which allows you to write to an SD card. So this is pretty interesting. It uses something called OpenLogger, which is open L-A-G-E-R, which allows you to log to a SD card that's connected over UR. So most uh, flight controllers will have like a black box log, which uses uh, like SPI to communicate to like the WS-128 chips, uh, windbound chips, or you can have like an onboard SD card. This is external over UART to another SD card, which makes it a little bit easier. Uh, main, which is pretty obvious, we can go into that a little bit more. Motors, uh, this is like what actually sends out commands to the motors and whatnot and uh, does all this stuff to, to DSHOT and DSHOT has lots of very interesting things and I'll definitely spend a lot of time talking about DSHOT because 
it's weird. And then also talking to uh, like BL Heli 32 or AM 32, which is an open source alternative um, PID file. So this is what takes care of all the actual PID tuning. So here you can see this is right where it happens. So you have your error, uh, like the time between PID loops, and then the parameters that go into it. And this does all the all the fun stuff like that. Um, the scheduler, so the scheduler is something I actually just added and it didn't used to be in it. And essentially I'm gonna spend a whole, my, probably my next video is gonna be on the scheduler because that's kind of the essence of, of the project uh, or the essence of how the code runs. And this is basically a way of adding functions or I'm gonna call them tasks to a loop. So essentially say you have a certain function that you wanna run a thousand times a second or in a one kilohertz loop then you can add that function to the one kilohertz root loop and then every millisecond it'll get run. But then say you have other functions that you wanna get run at 500 hertz or some function you wanna get run at 200 hertz. So you have to find some way to essentially arbitrate and um, decide which functions should be run at what speeds and then how do you actually get them to run at that clock speed. Um, so this function kind of takes care of that and I'm gonna spend a lot more time talking about that because the, uh, the way that it does it is a little bit interesting and it's a little bit new to me as well so hopefully we can we can push through that together uh, interrupt file so interrupt is usually where like when you use the cube MX it'll put all your interrupts in here but I actually took all the interrupts like the peripheral interrupts out so there's actually no peripheral interrupts in here and basically this is all just like the system interrupts so you might be seeing the the hard fault handler if you're if you're doing something wrong that the microcontroller doesn't like syscalls this is just a basic uh, file that comes with SCM32 um, sysmem and then utilities, the last one is kind of like, just like a miscellaneous in functions that are good to have. So um, like constraint 16. So this basically constrains a 16 bit number to a min value or a max value. So pretty simple stuff or string to float converter. So these are pretty much like all the files that go into it. Um, and everything obviously starts from main and gets run all the way through. And um, there's also a bunch of project files, like make files that can be important for SCM32, which kind of gets automatically generated and whatnot. Um, but besides that, that's pretty much all the stuff that really goes into uh, making this thing run. So in the next video, I think we're gonna start with the scheduler and really see how this thing goes from uh, function to function and making sure that things happen on time. Thanks for sticking with me on this one and I will talk to you soon.